welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, the GeoVax is a channel of clinical stage biotechnology company developing novel therapies and vaccines for cancers and many of the world's most threatening infectious diseases. Joining us to give us some updates on their next generation uh, cancer vac or uh, next generation COVID-19 vaccine along with uh, their cancer treatments. We're diving into it with David, the CEO, joining us as always. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year as well. It's a pleasure to get you back on in 2024. And I mean, you guys have had a few announcements. So we'll get into it with first and foremost, the results of the next generation COVID vaccine you're working on. So tell us where we sit with this. Sure, Kyle. And thanks for asking. You know, earlier this week, we issued a press release uh, disclosing results, the first really um, package of data results, so to speak, of our next generation COVID-19 vaccine in the specific trial, it's a phase two human clinical trial where it's evaluating our vaccine as a universal booster to mRNA vaccines. So in this study, we have healthy ad adults who have all received the mRNA vaccine, which means either the Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna. And then as a booster, they're receiving our vaccine and we're looking to see what the durability is of maintaining protective levels of immunity as well as what that actual immune response is. Is it a broader response? Does it uh, appear to be one that would be longer lasting, but also breadth of types of response, depending on, on when they receive the booster? We're absolutely delighted of the findings that, that were included in the press release. First of all, we showed that our durability at this, at this point is, is, is approaching one year. And if you recall, mRNA vaccines, so that's the Pfizer, the Moderna, their durability in the real world is looking more like two to four months. So we have a significant uh, sort of ability to give longer lasting protective immunity than what we're seeing in the currently authorized vaccines. Also, what we saw was very strong responses, not only from the antibody level, but from the T cells, the cellular immunity, which gives a broader breadth of protection. All. And that becomes very critical when you look at the different variants that continue to emerge and being able to sort of get ahead of a variant rather than just chasing after them. You may recall or may be aware of that, that what has been happening since the very beginning of seeing the evolution of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is that we continue to reconfigure the mRNA vaccines to go after whatever the latest variant of interest is. So in August, that was XBB 1.5. But by the time we got that reconfigured, we were now moving on into uh, JN1, for instance, which is what we're doing now. Well, what we also have seen, not only in this study, but this study gives you greater data on it, is that our vaccine, without having to go back and reconfigure at all, continues to provide protective immunity from the original Wuhan strain all the way through the, the most recent Omicron XBB 1.5, and we currently are evaluating it against the JN1, which is the variant everybody is talking about today. So in, in the not too distant future, I'll be able to update everyone on on how we continue to, to show protective immunity against the different variants. So this is very important because this means that what we have in development is in fact what we had hoped to see at least thus far, which is a universal booster for, uh, for the COVID-19, which means that regardless of, of which product someone received initially, ours added on top of that will provide a much more durable and a broader protective immunity giving a, a booster that does not mean that someone has to come back every two to four months, but perhaps no no sooner than eight to 12 months. So that's what we're seeing. We're, we're delighted with those results. It was just announced this past Tuesday. So we're excited about that. You also mentioned about Gadeptin. Gadeptin, as you may recall, is our therapy currently uh, completed, uh, completing a trial, a small phase two trial for advanced head and neck cancer. This is a study that was funded by the FDA uh, under the Orphan Drugs Clinical Trials Program. These are individuals who have failed every form of therapy that has been given to them. In fact, they, they are on palliative care, which means this is not intended to rescue them and give them extended life. It's to improve their life by perhaps reducing or eliminating certain treated targeted tumors that, for instance, might be blocking their ability to swallow or their ability to speak, but at least give them a higher and better quality of life during their end stage of their life. And what we recently announced was that we closed the enrollment and we're currently analyzing the data of the current trial and we'll be giving a, a report yet this uh, first half 
of, of 2024 on what the results are, as well as what our plans are to go forward with an expanded phase two trial uh, in uh, following discussions with the FDA. So, so we've got a lot coming forward now, and we have other interim results coming forward with some of our other studies with our next generation COVID-19. But over the next uh, several months, we'll be providing uh, updates on an ongoing basis. Well, on that note, I definitely appreciate all the clarity today, and we'll pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below, and definitely consider subscribing because, as mentioned, when the news catalysts come down the wire, of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on that note, we look forward to catching you in the next one.